Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install Stable Diffusion on a Windows PC. We're going to be using Windows 10. The process is similar for Windows 11. Now, we're going to be installing the automatic 11.11 version of Stable Diffusion. This contains a web UI, a user interface that allows us to interact with Stable Diffusion very easily. So you can see here, it allows us to create images just using some text and this user interface. Now, the installation instructions are found on this web page. I'll have a link to this web page and all the other pages that we're going to be using. But a brief uh, run through of what we are going to be doing and the software we're going to be using is useful. First of all, let's talk about hardware. You do need a powerful graphics card. You do need an NVIDIA graphics card uh, in order to use this. It has to have at least eight gigabytes of memory. You also need 20 gigabytes of storage on your hard drive or your SSD, and you will need 16 gigabytes of system memory. I'll have a set of uh, suggestions for the graphics cards you can use with Stable Diffusion. To the ground by the voice of an angel. We're going to be using a model from these guys. These are Runway, and they created the model that we use to create these sorts of images. Uh, now, one of the things you will find is they mentioned 10 gigabytes of VRAM. 8 gigabytes of VRAM is now possible. This is the other section of Runway's GitHub section. And as you can see here, these are the sorts of images that we can create just using text inside of Stable Diffusion. We will need not just Automatic 1111, we'll also need a model. And the model that the software is going to install automatically is this guy here. It's a four gigabyte file. And what you might want to do is to download this before the software actually installs. And I'll show you how to set things up uh, manually, or you can just let it run automatically. Now there's another piece of software you might want to get. This is three gigabytes. This is called the CUDA toolkit. This comes from NVIDIA and chances are you won't actually need it. If you have an up-to-date graphics card from NVIDIA, you are probably not going to need this. It's about three gigabytes. If I'm on a Windows 10 PC, I would come here and choose Windows 10 and then download uh, the local file. It's not essential. And like I say, there's a quicker way of working for the vast majority of people. First of all, we need to download some software that we normally don't have by default on Windows. And we can actually find out which software we need to download by either looking at the description, which will have the links that you need there, or you can come here to the installation section on Automatic 11.11. We need Python and we also need Git. Now, Python probably is what I'll install first. And this guy is going to be version 3.10.6. If you come down here, uh, you will need to install uh, the, the one recommended here. We also need to install Git. Uh, it's recommended this version here. So to download, I would basically click here. Uh, and uh, to download Git, I would click here. And it would start a download just like that. Now, we don't actually need this, so I'm just going to switch that off. We've already downloaded it, and I can just open it up by clicking there and hitting Run. Now, it will start to install once I press Next. But I want you to take note of one thing first. If I click next, it offers to install it here, next again. And it says it already exists. Yes, I'd like to install there. There's an option here to integrate this into Windows Explorer. I would strongly recommend that you allow this. You tick these two. You're going to need to, to install uh, Automatic 11.11 the way that we're going to install it. And then the rest of it is just going to be pretty much next, 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 next until we get to the end and then just let it run through the default installation. And once that's finished, we're going to install Python. So I've already downloaded it. We'll click on that. We'll click run. We come to this initial page here. Choose Add Python 3.10 to Path. That's very useful to do. I recommend doing that. And you'll find that you can either install it in your default uh, installation area, or you can install it in a, in a customized area. Now, I've had problems with the default area because sometimes this installation will have gaps in it. It will have spaces. And Python really, really does not like having spaces in the directory folder 
or in the path. So I'm going to choose my own path and I'm going to customize it like that. We come to this page, click next. And this is where I change the installation folder. I'm going to hit control A. That selects everything. And then I'm going to choose my drive, which is going to be drive J. And uh, we'll put in a directory. So it's going to create this directory on drive J. And the aim there is to have no spaces. It's really essential that you have no spaces. Otherwise, it does not work properly. You're going to have to make a note of where you install it. If you do as I do and install it in a custom location and then we hit install and it should complete the installation. It should be pretty quick as well. Let's close that. Now, this is the directory J. You can see Python is there and it's actually installed all this all the stuff there. So we can go back up here and I'm going to create a, a directory which is going to uh, just creating a folder uh, and we can call this whatever we want to call it SD for stable diffusion, but you can call it anything you want. I'm going to demonstrate to you that I've got a file here uh, which is called dot safe tensors. This is a file which is a model file. And it's very similar to that file that I spoke about earlier from Runway. It's very similar to this file, which contains all the information that we need to create our images. So if we don't have this or a similar file, and it can be a .ckpt or a safe tensor file, doesn't matter which, if we don't have that, then the installation process will automatically download it. But I've got one here and I'm going to try to use this one to stop it downloading this guy here. Uh, so if you've got your own model, as I've got here, this is my own model, you can actually try to use that model to basically complete the installation and it won't actually download this guy. So we'll go into the place where I want stable diffusion to be installed. We'll right click and this is where that integration, Windows integration comes in. I'm going to choose Git Bash here. Now this brings up a terminal and we need to fill that terminal with an instruction and that instruction is going to be Git clone. Git clone and space and we can go to automatic 1111 and we can actually just copy this entire message here which has got git clone in it or we can go to the top and go to code and inside of code we've got the address that we need for the installation i'm just going to copy the address since we've already typed in git clone we'll copy that address then we'll go to the terminal I'm going to right click and choose paste and it pastes that web address there and once i hit enter it will actually start cloning this repository on to my system inside that folder JSD that we created earlier. And that will take a bit of time. But whilst it's doing that, it's going to look for a model. And this is where I need to get clever. So we go to the directory and I'm going to take that model that I created. I'm going to copy it. And what you'll see is that inside of SD, we now have a folder called Stable Diffusion Web UI. We can double click that. We can go into models and we can get real clever and go into stable diffusion again. And I'm going to paste that file here. So we go to SD, go into stable diffusion web UI, which is that folder that automatically installed using the clone command. And we, that we find here, there is a fold, there's a file called web user dot bat now this file we could ins we can just double click this and it will install but we need to change a couple of things so that it works properly so i'm going to i'm actually going to edit this and you can edit this inside of notepad i'm going to use this with my default editor which is uh, notepad plus plus and what we need to do is to include the line where python is actually installed so put a slash at the end of that and then 
type in the name of the file, which is going to be python.exe. So that's the folder that we created and then python.exe will have been installed inside of that folder. So if we go back here, we'll find that here there is python.exe. That's what I'm referencing there. It needs to know where Python is installed. And we can actually come down here to set command line arguments. And this is where that particular tool, the CUDA toolkit comes in handy. You can download this and you can install this your own way if you don't have a specific NVIDIA card. And there are actually, there are actually installation instructions as to how you can do this. This is not essential. This is completely voluntary. To speed up uh, Stable Diffusion, we can use Xformers. Xformers comes from Facebook research and we use it just to speed up. We use it to speed up the stable diffusion installation. Now the instructions here are if you haven't got the kind of graphics card that you need to be able to use a different technique. So if you've got a Pascal, Turing, Ampere, Lovelace or Hopper card, and that is virtually all of the series of cards from Nvidia from uh, about five years ago through to today. If you have those ones, you can actually use a shortcut and I'm going to show you what that shortcut is. So inside of this file, you would come here, you would put in the quotation dash dash X formers. you got to spell it correctly. Then quotation mark. Uh, we save this and we can come to the installation directory for stable diffusion and we can double click on the web user.bat. This is the file that we need to access in order to make things run. So let's double click that. And the first time we run it, it should come up with a message telling us that it is actually installing stuff. So it's going to start installing stuff and the installation is going to take a bit of time. But because I copied that file, that safe tensor file into the models directory and that models directory that I used, which we can go to again. It's in the stable diffusion web dot web UI uh, directory models, stable diffusion. This is where you put your models. So if we hadn't put the model there, what it would do is it would download that huge four gigabyte file and it would put it in here. But because it should find something here, it's probably not going to download that file. It will probably quit uh, and complete the installation a little bit quicker. Now, this does take a bit of time, so I'm going to pause for a while and we'll see where we are uh, after a few minutes. Um, it's finished uh, installing and it has got a note here saying that the it was launching the web UI with arguments dash dash xformers. That means that uh, it installed properly. It would have an error message if it didn't install properly. We need to keep this guy open whilst we use uh, whilst we use stable diffusion. And you can see here in the models directory, we only have that one model that I earlier copied there. So it did not uh, install that other model. Now, what we'll need to do is to copy a bit, bit of text inside of the command window. And the piece of text we need to copy is this here, HTTP 127. And we can create a tab, paste that. And when you paste it, what you'll see is we've got that uh, model that we saw earlier. And we can now start actually programming. So uh, what do we want? I want a fairy house in the woods lit up mushrooms growing nearby. Now it understands English, so hopefully it will give us something that looks good. Let's generate. I think that looks pretty good. Now it is 512 by 512, which is the default size for the particular 
model that we are using. And that's the case for quite a lot of the models that you use with a stable diffusion. Some of them can have a larger default size. And for instance, if we were using this other model, this uh, pruned one, I think this actually has a larger, larger size. And with this one, you would need a more powerful graphics card than just eight gigabytes. Probably it won't work properly with eight gigabytes, but that is how you set it up. That is how you get it running. And uh, it really is as simple as that. Uh, if we hit generate again, it will generate a new image. Uh, and this one that looks brilliant as well. Now the models that you're using would have a huge impact on what you actually see. So experiment, experiment with different models and experiment with different uh, texts up here. You can put negative text here. You can say, uh, I don't want this to be at night. So we'll put night in there and then hit generate and it should give us a slightly more daytime scene. There you are. So that's basically how it works. And hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions, you might want to leave a comment and uh, hopefully uh, we can get some progress being made here. Guys, that's it for this one.